Hello, boys and girls, Ultimate Hero here. Welcome to Character Analysis. Next on the line, we've, we're, we're going to start with the second years. So, these are the students that are all crammed in one classroom, and by pure coincidence, totally. Actually, technically, this one is, all Persona 3 was kind of rigged. Anyway, um, let's start off with, with, an, with one of the ladies. Today, we're going to work on G.A. Satsudaka. Trial of the Dragon, yeah. Okay, so... Diving in straight into her personality, she is a tomboy with surprisingly, or to what you would not expect on the first run, to have a lot of feministic traits. For one, she's afraid of bugs. She's She gets scared surprisingly easily. At least the, the things that uh, that your cliche, uh, typical uh, female or feminine girl would be. While Yukiko, who represents femininity herself, is surprisingly... Like, she's she's into a lot of the non-feministic or typical feministic things that you would expect a girl to be afraid of. Which I'll get into that when we get to her, to Yukiko herself, but because today we're focusing on Chie. So, Chie, despite all that, she is a self-taught kung fu master. She actually, she, saw, she taught herself how to do kung fu techniques. And she's all, also obsessed with some movies. Trial of the Dragon, and there's a sequel to that which you can watch with her and uh, Persona 4 Golden, which will give, which will you'll get really close to her. And I mean, it doesn't matter with who, but for especially for her, you'll get like you'll get a free level up and some bonus stats to go along with it. Though this applies to any movie you watch with anybody, but for her, you just get a little, you got a lot more closer. But it's kind of show, it just kind of goes to show how much she loves her uh, kung fu. There are references to Bruce Lee, when she, especially when she says, don't think, feel, and I think Jackie Chan, but I think that's in the manga, I think, where they reference him. She sucks at cooking, just like all the rest of the girls, with the except, with the slight exception of Naoto. Speaking of Naoto, there'll be something that'll happen later on. So, um, aside from that, she also has a thing for steak. Yeah, she wants that meat, alright. Yeah, I, I just had to get the joke out of the way. She likes to have, she likes steak a lot. She, so hence why they call her the uh, carnivore discarded womanhood. But either way, um, she also has this repeated thing of beating up Yosuke for some stuff. Especially like the first example being uh, when he when he broke the trial of the dragon disc. Though that even though you could have pieced it together when you really think about it, the manga Persona 4 Magician, I think is what it's called. I know it's called The Magician, or it's centered around Yosuke before the events of Persona 4, like when he moves into Inaba. It, it, you see when the disc actually breaks, though you don't see what he or you see how he feels when he gets freaking murdered or mauled by Chie. So, anyway, um, enough of the personality. Next on the list is why is this person have the Arcana. So, she represents the chariot. Chariot, it stands for like a short-lived victory. Just basically, or right, chariot was just yes, the symbol of victory, conquer it, or conquest, I should say, self-assertion, control, war, and command. Though other others could say as perseverance, a journey, a rush, decision, adversity, turmoil, and vengeance. Though. In, in, when you think about it, the whole game is, I think, but one big journey, obviously. Well, then a lot of games are, but this one's kind of more of a, a more out there one. Either way, Chie represents this with a desire for, like, you know, when you all think about it, we all desire for victory, but Chie also emphasizes in it, in a sense. Her victory is not the typical, you know, win a battle. Really, none of them are. Surprisingly, even the Persona 3 uh, social link, or at least for the male, uh, what's his face, uh, Kazushi, it, for his victory, it was, um, dig, or, you know, wh wh how did, what is it again? Why is it leaving my mind when I'm actually playing through Persona 3? He, oh yeah, um, being able to win that competition. That's the victory he seeks. For Chie, it's more of a victory against herself. She keeps talking about how she wants to be better than her shadow. Which, that's an understandable goal. But in that process, well, actually, I should be saving that for the other one. So, it's really hard for me to explain Chie. Well, basically, you're going through her own journey in this game. 
or since we have to go with the term journeys, and that's what chariot also represents, you're going through her journey of becoming a stronger person, just like with everybody else, but more or less with her being stronger herself, which that that thought process she had will change, but I'll explain that when we get to the social link. It's hard to explain this one because of the fact I, pl I placed this one right before, or a little bit farther back from the social link, because it's hard to explain that without spoiling the social link, which I'm not really spoiling, because you already you already know this, but I'd rather wait till we get to the social link before I explain that, so let's just get straight into the shadow. Shadow Chie, um, she represents, uh, Reverse Chariot, which, oh, I might as well go into the appearance of it. Actually, yeah, let's get the, let's get the symbolism out of the way first. It, the Reverse Chariot rem symbolizes envy, addiction, low self-confidence, and abusive control. And also, as well, unsuccessful defeat, failure, last minute loss, and vanquishment. Just those are extras, by the way, if you want to, in case you want to know. But, these qualities come from her relationship with Yukiko. She's jealous of Yukiko's beauty and addicted to how Yukiko depends on her. While her bond with Yukiko may not be physically abusive, Chie emotionally controls the relationship. This is the reason to the dominatrix theme that brings physical form to her emotional bondage felt by both Yukiko and Chie. Now, y this is really a one-sided type of bondage, as much as the game kind of hints at it. And actually, when I think about it, there is a special thing I have for Chie, but I and Yukiko, but I'm gonna save it for uh, the shipping video. So based on that, you know exactly what I'm gonna talk about. Why I say Chie and Yukiko do not work well together as a couple. It does not make sense to me. Most of the time, I think people pair them up, especially because they all like, oh my god, big character Yosuke bromance. Which that I'll be talking about when we get to Yosuke. At least the the issue of his homophobia. Anyway, um, the reason why she shaped it as a, or symbolized the dominatrix is because of that, her desire to control people. Hence why, especially when you see, like, underneath her, you see three stu pale students, uh, trying to pick her up. And also the long hair behind her represents the envy. And ironically, originally, I think in the original design of Chie, or the, not original original, but, well, just the basic early designs, she was supposed to have long hair, while I believe Yukiko was to have shorter hair. Which is ironic. Also, a fun little note, um, I believe Chie is based off of another character, but I think from, uh, another Atlas game, though it's not related to, uh, Megami Tensei, really. Chie, I believe, is based off of, what's her, what's her name again? Mm, I forget that girl's name. I know, I, f I know what it is, I know what game it's from, it's Trauma Center, I believe. Or trauma team. Where is it? Uh... Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go find it. I'm gonna go find it. Oh, hold on a sec. Okay, I got it. Yeah, she's based off of Maria Torres. She is um, from Trauma Team. As I, I think that's the first game actually. But uh, yeah, she's based off of Maria Torres. I bl and as for uh. Yukiko, Yukiko, ironically, is based off Tomoe Tachinawa, it, Tachibana, which is, well, the irony is because Tomoe, and that's the, uh, Chie's persona, but that's, I, I get, that's kind of a coincidence, more, not, not intentional, really, but they're based off, those two are based off of, from another, these, uh, this other Atlas game, which is really interesting to me, but that's just one little note about Chie's design, but anyway, because that was kind of bothering me, I don't know why I wanted, why I bothered trying to prove that here, either way, um, it, the the shadow itself actually more or less represents exactly as it's pointed out, and really the dominatrix works with it perfectly. Though people that cannot stop making the joke, dominatrix banana head. I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't blame them at all. But um, oh yeah, if you look at the top of uh, out of on her hat like thing, you see a smile, which I believe is kind of reminiscent to, to one of the buttons Chie has on her uh, jacket. But that's just a little thing to point out. Either way, um, she has the desire to... F she controls Yukiko because of her sheer jealousy and just how much she dislikes how all the guys drool over her. And really... Actually, I should save that, I should save that other part. You see, there's a lot of things I want to say, but I, they're better to be saved for later, where it makes more sense and it's more relevant, which kind of saddens me right now. 
Well, um, that's basically all that needs to be said about her shadow. But, um, it's, I kind of find it funny that it's weak to wind. Hmm, I, I wonder why. Anyway, I'll get, to, I'll get to that later. Anyway, let's get straight into the character's social link. More or less the revelations. At first, she wanted it to keep have this uh, constant thing to improve herself. As you saw why she was doing the training, she wanted to improve herself for herself. But then, as time goes along, and then she starts talking about like how she wants to, how she wants to protect you and Yukiko, and by you I mean main character, not Yunarakami specifically. Because well, yeah, I don't want to mix the, the names up or the. This is why I hate that the fact that his first name is Yu, because of all the freaking puns and on, whether it be them intentional or not, because of that, and it could lead to some mix-ups. So just know I'm always, I'm always going to refer him to Sochi for the most part. You should know me by now. Really, the newer the newer members of the Persona fan base will call him Yunara Kami, while the older ones will still call him main character or Soji, because that's what what we're used to. Anyway, um, as time passes, especially with dealing with the bullies and how she wanted to protect that kid, it helped her re or made her realize that the power she wants is not good. She doesn't want to use it on herself. She wants to use it to protect everybody, be it not just herself, more or less, because really we all try to protect ourselves in a way. Which is understandable. She also wants to protect, uh, main character, Yukiko, even Yosuke, even though she's the one that inflicts the pain on him the most, and everybody else. But, that's really all that, that needs to be pointed out. It's just simple as it is. She wants to be, she, she wants the, the power to protect others. When a, a couple other characters have that, but really that's her desire. The desire to protect others. Which is a nice desire, that's all that we wish we could do sometimes, especially to those we care for. We want to protect them. Even the most selfish people in the world would, can go that far if the bond with, with, with bonds with certain people are strong enough. They'll be willing to even risk their own lives, as selfish as they are, for other people. Which, Chie is kind of, is a selfish character. When you, as much as you want to, you can argue that, the shadow proves it indefinitely that she was selfish. But as time passed, she started to lose that selfishness to grow a little more selfless. Which can show to people that people can change right there. So if you're going to get offended by the fact that I called her out on being selfish, nothing wrong with it, really. It, it is kind of bad to be selfish, but hey, you don't have to be that way if you want. I mean, it is part of you, but we can change for the better. You don't have to be selfish. As much as I'm contradicting myself here, you can change for the better. If I, I honestly think I'm a little selfish, and I hate to say that I want to do stuff for other people, which I, I don't understand how the hell Chie can say that. But, well, I may as well go say, let's, let's talk about my final opinion, how I relate to her right here. Anyway, um, as much as I hate to say that I want to do things for people because it makes me like, I'm this selfless person, guys. Because I hate that. I hate boasting about oneself. And it makes me feel like I am. But I may as well say it, yeah. That's how I can relate to Chie. I want to protect other people. with her, Like, just basically with her own value. Moral value. She wants to protect other people. Which is a nice goal. I like it, and I'm all for it. But, aside from that, I don't, I've never really had the desire to control somebody. And we've all had this, other, this negative desire, too. We're all jealous of some people. That's also what she tries to prove, or her shadow, more or less, acts specifically. It shows that we all are jealous of some people. And if there are, is a way we can take advantage of them to make ourselves look a little bit better than them, we'll take that chance. Most, some people will, you know, maybe some people will want to be this the better person. Like, no, what will I accomplish by that? If they realize it, that's great for them. But sometimes you don't really realize that you're trying to control somebody like that. Sometimes you are aware of it, and in Chie's case, she was not aware of it at all. She just did it subconsciously. But, we all get jealous of people. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we wish we're, but that also leads to some, the concept of we want to be someone we're not. Which... That can relate a little bit to Yosuke, so I'll save that for that another time. So as for Chie, what I think of her, she's not really my favorite female character. Really, the one I like the most, as biased as it is, is Yukiko. Like, Yusei's alright, I like how she's optimistic, and the same can be said with Chie. I like how she's optimistic, I like, I like optimism in a girl, don't get me wrong. Again, that's just my preference, because I'm a pessimist, and... I mean, if I, if I get a girl... If my next girlfriend or slate or whatever is a uh, pessimistic person, that's fine. But if I have to, if I can make preferences, if if I could choose, I'd want a girl that's optimistic. 
but as for Chie, there's just something about her that just doesn't make me feel like I'd be right for her, or not be I'd be right for her, like that I'd be like a really good friend with her. Like I don't know if I could be good, f like like if it could go work out as friends either way. So as for her relations, despite her optimism, there's just something about her that makes me think that I don't think I could be friends with her even if I could try. Like if I could actually be friends with these characters. The only ones I could think I could be friends with are the guys, for sure, and perhaps Yukiko and Risei, and a bit of Naoto, but for some reason, I have a feeling Chie and I would be at odds, just like Yosuke, <laughs> except I don't think I'd get beaten the crap out of for everything I say, because I do not go as far as Yosuke, and I swear, it's like, Yosuke, did you seriously have to say stuff like that? And the other times where he gets his ass handed to him, it's like, you brought that on yourself, dude. But really, Chie... She's not one of my favorite female characters. I think I kind of prefer her over Naoto sometimes. And sometimes the other way around. But in general, I think I prefer Chie a bit more. But that's probably because I see a lot more of her side than I see Naoto's. But really, Chie, is, I don't see what's so great about her. I only... S uh, it's like I'm appreciating the more underrated ones, which are... I say Naoto and Chie are by far the most popular female characters, while Yukiko and Risei are kind of underrated. So I'm kind of like... I'm like supporting the underdogs here, but at least in terms of the ladies. Because for the guys, they're all kind of balanced out, so I'm thinking uh, Teddy might be the least favorite among the guys. Because as you already know, my favorites are male, or main character Kanji uh, and Yosuke, and then there's Teddy at the bottom. It used to be uh, Yosuke ahead, but now it's just switched to Kanji because well, Golden make me look made me love Kanji. Cause Kanji, God damn it, Kanji man, you're like the best, most awesome person ever. I just like his character development a lot. But Chie, honestly, I feel they could have done a lot more for her. Like, uh, both for Chie and Yosuke. I speak for both of them here because. Honestly, they could have built up into their shadows a lot more. Yosuke's was a slightly understandable because you had to wait till Saki died for you to notice, but even then, it was kind of not. A, it kind of rushed it. They could have done some more, be it aside from this whole Saki death thing. You could have built up a little more. Like I, I could think of a good example right here with Chie at least. In Chie's case, the example I could think of is you remember how on the first day of school when you're walking back home. Uh, Chie asks if you think Yukiko is cute. Man, like, okay, you know how I would say... Okay, I didn't actually say it in my first run, or in the Let's Play, but let's say I said she was cute. And of course, you'll get the typical uh, reaction from Yukiko, which, or the likely one, but then Chie, you can see Chie give an angered or irritated look. That would that would be a nice way to hint at the fact that she wishes to, you know, be or shows her jealousy of Yukiko. I would have really liked to see that. That would have been a nice little touch right there. That's, you might not notice it on your first run, but it would be like... like to, Well, it kind of does hint at it, but it could have been a little bit of a more... Uh, maybe it still would have been vague, but vague enough to the point where you keep yourself interested, because really, that's kind of a forgettable moment nonetheless. Not for me, because, you know, I love waifu. But I think they could have done that a little bit. Like, they could have worked on their build-up a bit more, because, well, because Chie and Yosuke do not get their own dungeons, so, and I understand why. Otherwise, the intro would have dragged on a lot longer, and I would not have been able to put up with that. Y Yukiko, she gets the, she gets a fair amount of build-up. I think it's a fair amount, especially when you see how she keeps leaving, and how you see her at work all the time. That kind of makes you think about, like, why is she going to work all the time? You know? It builds up to that, but as for Chie and Yosuke, they needed a lot more. Which, sad to say, they don't get. Either way, I think that's all I can really think about for, the, for this, so... Next time, we're gonna tackle on Yosuke. Yosuke... Hmm, his should be sub His should be easy. No promises, but I'll try to do what I can to make it really good for Yosuke. Because you already know, I think my best one, personally, is goes to Kanji, because I just love Kanji. And I relate to him so well, hence why it was easier to explain. Chie, Teddy, and, uh... Risei were hard to explain because I'm not exactly like them, because they're... They are optimistic characters. I'm a pessimistic character. I mean, I could call... I could say Kanji's a pessimistic character. Um, Yosuke's a pessimistic. Naoto, surprisingly, pessimist. 
Yukiko, pessimist. Main character, at least Soji's the pessimist. He, he, it's shown throughout the manga, even from what I know in the English, so that what's been translated so far. We can all agree uh, Soji has a pessimist, pessimistic outlook on life, and I'll explain that when we get to him. You know Arakami? I can't really tell. I can't. Re he's kind of like on the fence. He's smack dab in the middle. But. Yeah, that's why it's harder, but we got all the optimistic characters out of the way. I mean, don't get me wrong, the pessimistic characters that I mentioned will get optimistic. They do get optimistic at times, but, you know, yeah, in general, they have a pessimistic... They act... They have a pessimistic attitude, somewhat. And by pessimistic, sometimes it's not that strong. God damn, I've said pessimistic all the damn time. So, yeah, tell me what you think of Chie. So, in the next video, we're, take, we're taking on Yosuke. We're going to get the Brosuke, so... Uh, again, yeah, say, tell me what you think of Chie. Is she your favorite character or not? She's not mine, but hey, I, I understand why some people like her. I see where people come from for where they like her. That's it's understandable. Anyway, till next video, stay gold. Okay, something I want to add at the end right here. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but apparently when I when I uploaded the Naoto analysis, the part where I relate to Naoto got cut off. So I'm just going to put up a simple explanation. The only way I can really relate to Naoto is of the fact that how um, we all feel like we have, I simply felt that at times where I have to load somebody else's expectations, or rather sometimes I want to, which like Naoto does, and of course the desire of being alone. Or, or not the desire of being alone, of not wanting to be alone. Excuse me. We, and and I'm pretty sure everybody here on the internet, the majority amount, have felt that way. I doubt any... If some of you can deny it, I will understand a few, a handful. But I'm pretty sure that's why the majority of the people are here. I hear it every day. So, I guess that's... I think that's why people really like Naoto so much, because honestly, she's not one of my favorite female characters, like I said with Chie. I don't know why. There's just something about Naoto as well that I just don't really get. I just don't see what people like in her. I somewhat see what pe where people come from with it, but I see completely with Chie. Don't get me wrong, I see where they're coming from. But as for Naoto, not so much. Sometimes I talk like her a little bit, kinda. But I guess maybe she rubbed off on me. I don't mind that, though. It's nice to pick up some new vocabulary. Besides, not because he sound a little bit smarter, but I guess because he sound a little more refined and a little more mature. It's not the matter. To me, I want to have like an expansive vocabulary, not because I sound like, oh, I'm going to sound so smart. I want to sound, I want to feel like I'm more mature. I want to sound it, and I want to feel it, if that makes any sense. Naoto has that mature, like, has that mature attitude feel, because she emulates it from the adults. But eventually it just became permanently th a thing for her. Though I wish, I, I wanted to hear, as honestly, I would have loved to hear Naoto speak a little bit of slang, or attempt to. That would have been so hilarious. <laughs> but really, Naoto's not one of my favorite female characters, or favorite characters in general. I don't really... It's because she came in so late in the game, there was so much potential for her, but because she appeared so late, that was not... that was kind of a problem. Either way, I, I just don't really get what people see in her. She's nothing special to me. She's just Naoto, really. She's just there. But yeah, that, okay, that's really all I wanted to put. I wanted to put a simple explanation right there, so yeah. That's what I think of Naoto, or how I relate to her, my final opinion. Not that great of a character, or not that she's not bad. I just don't understand what's so great about her. She's just... She's a she's a nice character. I understand her personality, obviously, but I don't. I'm not a big fan of her, which that's just personal preference. If you like Naoto a lot, fine. But I don't need I don't need the fucking Naotots fan base to go all fucking murder me. I am irritated with them enough. They honestly, as I've already called out, the Naoto fan base is a bit shallow, especially with the whole issue of the fact that she's supposedly a transgender character, even though the game clearly states she's female, I don't understand that logic. It makes no sense, and it's complete bullshit. I'm cussing a lot, but oh well, I don't care. Naoto is- honestly, Naoto is not a transgender. I don't know where they- I don't know why they came up with that. 
it's by far one of the most just the most impish argument I have ever heard it's one of the stupidest ideas there if you didn't understand what impish meant but yeah that's what I think of Naoto but okay so tell me what you think of Naoto in case you didn't see that but really say put that on the other video really so Okay, that was just a little additional part because I didn't want to re-upload the I didn't want to re-upload the whole Naoto video. I don't want to bother. So yeah, here's the the extra Naoto part that I missed or that got cut out for some reason. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. So yeah, until next video, stay gold.